because we just dealt damage here and now we can go ahead and sacrifice our ember hauler i thought we needed two for that but i guess we only need one and easy as that you guys we just went three and oh absolutely demolishing our opponent's gruel it's going to be a serious contender Hey, thanks for taking the time to check out Haluka Game. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel for your chance to win up to 500,000 gems, you guys. We just did a gem giveaway video, so go ahead and watch that if you want to get hyped up. But today, we are playing Theros Beyond Death. Wizards of the Coast was gracious enough to invite us to a pre-release event, and uh, we got a stacked account, you guys. We have 600,000 gems. We've already been spending them. Uh, so we have plenty of gems to spaz out. We're gonna open some packs, we're gonna play some drafts, we're gonna do some seals, all of that. So make sure to jump on to our Twitch. Uh, we're live every morning, 6 a.m. PST normally, but during this event, we're gonna be live as long as we possibly can. With that all being said, we are playing Gruel today, you guys, and it is brutal. We absolutely destroyed our opponents. We went three and oh quite easily. And uh, let's break down the deck, and then we're gonna talk about our uh, ideal line of play and combo, uh, because it is definitely held within uh, these cards. We have four Pell Collectors. We all know what Pell Collector is. Whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, if that creature's power is greater than Pell Collector, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Pell Collector. As long as there's three or more 1-1 one, one counters on Pell Collector, it also has Trample, which is great. We have Ember Hauler. Uh, this is just strictly for loyalty on an ideal line of play. Uh, sometimes this is hard to play because of the mana, but when you do while out, you want to while out perfectly, and this is how you're going to do it. So you can sacrifice Ember Hauler. It deals two damage to any target, and then he costs two himself. We have uh, the Nessian Horn Beetle for two. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control another creature with power four or greater, put a 1-1 counter on it. Sick. Paradise Druid, we all know this. As long as it's uh, untapped, it has Hexproof, and then you can tap it for a mana of any color. We have a single Domri's Ambush. Put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control, then uh, that creature deals combat damage equal to its power to uh, target creature or Planeswalker you don't control. Keyword Planeswalker here. It's really nice to be able to smash out a Planeswalker. We have three uh, Cloths, God of Destiny. This is a three drop, which is sick. It's a four, five, indestructible. As long as your devotion to red and green is less than seven, it's not a creature. However, at the beginning of pre-combat main phase, XL target card from a graveyard, which means your opponent does as well. Uh, if it was a land card, you're gonna add a land, either a mountain or a forest. Otherwise, you gain two life and deal two damage to each opponent. Woof. This card is a sleeper. I really, really like this. This will activate our spectacle costs uh, for us as well. Mm, love it. We have three uh, Nyla Kenide, indestructible as well. This is a five, six, it's a four drop, so a little bit heavier. As long as your devotion to green is less than five, it's not a creature. Creature spells you cast cost one less to cast, and you can pay three, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it into your hand. Otherwise, you may put it into your graveyard. Uh, we have three questing beasts. Of course, we all know this. This is the star of the show uh, in Throne of Eldrain. What a broken card, you guys. Vigilance, Death Touch, Haste, it's a four, four. It can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Combat damage uh, that would be dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. Uh, whenever Questing Beast deals damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker it controls as well. Could there be any more text on this card? Just wanna throw up sometimes. <laughs> uh, Phosphorus Bronze Blooded for five. Indestructible, as long as your devotion to red is less than five, it's not a creature. Other creatures you control have haste, and then you can pay three. You may put a target red creature card or an artifact creature card from your hand onto the battlefield, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So that is one of our key combo abilities there. <clears throat> Ilgard the Razebore, 6-6 six, six, Trample. Whenever he attacks, you may put another creature card from your hand onto the battlefield, also attacking, and then you're gonna bring that to your hand at the beginning of your next end step. And then when he dies or is put into exile, you have the ability to put him third from the top in your library. Uh, so this is another one of our combo pieces. And then it just gets even better, you guys. Draxeth, Maw of Flames. This is a seven drop, it's a seven seven with flying. Whenever it attacks, it deals four damage to any target and three damage to up to two other targets. Uh, oh my lord. To top it all off, we have the Great Henge. The spell costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among other creatures you control. You can tap it, add two mana, gain two life, and then whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield, it's gonna get an additional 1-1 one, one counter on it, and you draw a card. So that is absolutely sick. We have four Temples uh, of Abandon and four Stomping Grounds. 
to uh, spice up our land a little bit. Uh, you could work on the land more, I'm sure, but this is just a really good uh, base build for Boros right now. Um, as far as ideal lines of play go, uh, you have your one drop, you do a Pelt Collector, you have a two drop, you do your Paradise Druid, you have a three drop, which will allow you to play four, right? Because then you'll have three mana and four. So you play your Questing Beast, and then uh, you get your Phosphorus blooded out on turn four, I believe. If you had, if we did it with uh, the Goose, we could do it on turn four, but we're not doing it with the Goose right now, um, just because we don't know how reliable it is. But you could potentially do this on turn four if you were running Gilded Goose. We're doing it on turn five right now, um, and that's gonna allow you to play uh, Illigarg for three instead of five and then Illigarg will bring Draxoth Maw Flames so each creature combos into the next uh, which is really really cool and you're just able to get uh, quite a bit of damage out and then of course if you have the Keenite out it's going to cost cheaper uh, to do right because our creatures will cost less which is really great so we could probably potentially uh, trim cards to put our Gilded Goose out there because uh, eventually you will have the two extra mana and that's where the Ember Hauler comes in. Uh, you'll play it, you'll get to know it. We didn't get to demonstrate it uh, today, and I'm in a hurry, so I don't want to spend too much time searching for that ideal uh, turn one, turn two, turn three, turn four, but uh, it definitely lies in here. You guys are gonna figure it out. I have faith in you. You're a smart bunch of individuals. So with that all being said, thank you for checking out this deck tech of uh, Theros Beyond Death. Uh, thank you again, Wizards, for invite inviting me to this pre-release event. I hope you guys all enjoy the content. And uh, yeah, make sure to check us out on Twitch, subscribe to the YouTube, and enjoy this footage. Alrighty, we finally made it in you guys. Let's see what kind of shenanigans we can get up to. We're gonna start off with Gruul and uh, see where it goes from there. We do really wanna flex our Ilgarg the Raised Board, but we also need our Phosphorus Bronze Blooded. Um, but nonetheless, this is gonna get us into the fray. And we can go from there. Getting our questing, or sorry, <laughs> getting our pelt collector. We drew a questing beast. He's got gilded goose. He's playing salt die. A little blue in the fray. We're just choosing to ramp. Uh, gonna get that attack in, right? Pelt Collector's 2 2 now. Can swing through the goose if we want, but I bet he's just gonna take it. Yes. Nessian Horn Beetle, uh, quite interesting as well. So we get our Drax off. That combo's out of our Raise Board. Can get that out of the way now. Swing in with our questing beast while it's hot. That's for seven. Look at us go. We're now going to be able to put a counter and draw a card because questing beast has power four or greater, which is great. Treacherous blessing. He goes in to draw three. Now he can sacrifice this and bring something worth four out, which is quite uh, opportunistic because normally whenever you cast a spell, you're going to lose life, but now he doesn't. And he grabs his Unchained. So that guy is a beast. You're going to have to look out for him. <laughs> Let's just keep pushing uh, the envelope forward, though. Thanks to uh, Questing Beast, combat damage can't be prevented. So we're both going to die here, right? That's what he probably doesn't realize is that Questing Beast is going to shut that down directly. The escape cost on this is six, so it's going to take him some time to get there. 
He could minus three on our Pelt Collector. That would be pretty cool. As long as our raise board gets to attack, Draxat's coming out. And that should be a good game. Obviously, we wanted to do all that for four, not six, but that's kind of how she goes. We get to go. Let's grab the land. And, uh, yeah. We can go all in. Oh my lord. Ma of Flames is gonna absolutely wreck our opponent. Can you believe it? It's as easy as that, you guys. Woof. So that was actually easier than we expected. I mean, I guess we did put about 40 hours in our deck list. So it should work out. This looks like another great opening hand and we're actually getting to play first. Oh, with our Paradise Druid, obviously. We have basically a free turn here. Another raise board, so that's getting uh, to be a little bit excessive. Let's just take the hit now. We are going towards seven devotion towards green and red. Currently sitting at three. Four, five now. He will have to deal with the raise bore. Um, we're really looking for a good draw though. Surveil one is fine. And then the exiling the enchantments from the harpy is also fine. Mm. That will put our devotion to seven here, which is great. Let's just get in for what little damage we can do. Declining here, just because it's another raise bore, it'll have no effect. <coughs> You have to excuse me, I am eating soup. Um, we're rushing today to go get content out. So I'm gonna enjoy my lunch while we do this video. All right, Dread Presence, very good. Absolutely love that. Especially when comboed with uh, Delegion Grove. That makes every land you play a swamp very, very neat. All right, we'll take that. Let's play the Great Henge as well. And let's just aggro in again. It's kind of a bummer. But it is what it is. Let's just hold it in our hand. We could play it and grab the draw from our great henge for the creature and then have four mana to play it, but we're gonna hold off for now. We're still getting six damage, and that is excessive, you guys. You're off the desecrated. Now he's gonna play a land. Pretty groovy. That will make a double dread presence trigger. Yes, I love it. And he's going in after our horn beetle. Grabbing four life in the process. Let's tap our Great Henge for the life. 
Uh, let's get rid of his little grove dude. It's gonna deal some damage. Right? Let's go ahead and smash in. This time we are going to use uh, our secondary raise bore. We're gonna keep the first, and that's gonna trigger our great henge. Raise bore can go third from the top, so we can always just play that again for another draw in a little bit. Aw, we gotta land. It is what it is. Let's smash in. And, uh, yeah, down to one. Indestructible does survive death touch, which is really cool. We're at 24, our opponent's at one. We've got the Great Henge for a draw engine. And another boar, second from the top, to activate said draw engine. He does have Yarok and Dread Presence on the field, so he's doing big gains if he plays any land. Enigmatic Incarnation allows him to sacrifice another enchantment. If he does, he gets to grab a creature with converted mana cost equal to the enchantment that he sacrificed, plus one. So we're just gonna allow this to hit, no blocks. He gets three free life. Pretty groovy. Sacrifices his enchantment that was on the land. It costs two, so he gets to play something worth three. He chooses a Risen Reef, which now double triggers because of Yarok. Very cool. And he grabs two draws. Let's go ahead and grab our life from the Henge. Our turn. And uh, yeah, that's all he wants to do is run, run, run away. All right, so we're 2-0. and We're going to try to go 3-0 and here and move on to another deck afterwards. We don't want to beat uh, a dead dog or kick dog one sound, whatever you want to call it. Hmm. <laughs> we go first, don't we? I'll keep it. I'll allow it. Let's trick him into thinking we're mono red. We're definitely not. He seems to be mono green. This is our least good draw hand so far. Uh, it's gonna be rare if this pays off for us. No attacks here, wouldn't make it through. Okay, he's going towards Nissa, it would appear. Oh, such big ramp, he has huge ramp on us, you guys. This is getting to be a little much. Questing Beast can hit the field though. He can also attack for his four. Beautiful. We're sitting at uh, one, two, three, four, five, six loyalty. <coughs> we'll be hitting uh, seven with our bronze blooded next turn. Here comes Nissa. I'm sure of it. What? Come on, man. We're just chilling, right? He's gonna maybe destroy our artifact or our enchantment. We'll let him decide, though. I mean, we're not doing well. I mean, all we have is a questing beast. Really? He's going straight in for the land. He just wants lands, you guys. This is incredible. Very weird stuff. Paying two life here, getting our bronze blooded out. And uh, yeah, we're swinging in for even more now. Our opponent down to six. If we draw really anything from our hand, we can auto play it, which is great. He grabs his uh, Nyx Bloom Ancient, which makes land tap for three times as much. That's incredible, but what do you use all that land on? That's what I wanted to know. So hopefully our opponent can show us here. Just big, big mono green drops. Like, I don't even know, you guys. Paradise Dude just, just tapped it for three mana. Absolutely incredible. Ooh, we're getting a Hydra's Growth as well. 
I'm gonna get weird. We could have actually kept the Kenai in our hand because we just dealt damage here and now we can go ahead and sacrifice our Ember Hauler. I thought we needed two for that, but I guess we only need one. And easy as that, you guys, we just want three and oh, absolutely demolishing our opponent's gruel. It's gonna be a serious contender. If I can make a list like this work so good, uh, you know, the pros are gonna just tear it out. So, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel for your chance to win up to 500,000 gems. We just did a giveaway video, so go check that out if you want to get hyped up. Um, and then stay tuned for the phase four as that rolls out. <clears throat> We're also giving away the Samsung Chromebook on our Twitch, which we are live on every morning, 6 a.m. PST. So, thanks again for watching, guys. I really appreciate it, and I hope you're super, super excited for Theros. Uh, it's a lot of fun so far, and I'm really looking forward to playing it for like the next three to four months. So, take care, and we'll see you all tomorrow.